All right, so here's where we left off. We have our function here that deals uh, 10, uh, 10 hands and then looks for pairs. All right, this is our look for pair function, okay, um, that you guys were working on. We start with a, whoops, we start with a count that's equal to zero. All right, and then we look into our um, hand of cards. So first is the name of the first card that we're looking at. Um, and then, uh, and so, and it's going to go from the range to the length of the hand minus one, because we only want to do four cards. If we've got five total, we only want to look at four cards. Okay. The card we look at is going to be equal to hand bracket first. We don't really need this step, this, this step right here. It's, it's really not necessary because we only use look at in this line right here. Um, so you could have put hand bracket first into this spot and then deleted line 51 entirely. Then we do uh, for I in range, starting with wherever the first element is, plus one, we look at all the cards and compare their values. Um, if we find that we have found a match, okay, uh, we uh, do count plus one and then found a pair. Um, and so the thing that took us all day on, on uh on uh, Friday was that we were not hitting uh, we were not hitting the jackpots right we weren't getting any of the big hands uh, but we did eventually um, uh, hit them all right we did eventually get the get the hands um, and uh, they were uh, this let's put a slide in here let's see if this works I uh, kind of ran out of battery uh, earlier uh, so. Uh, hopefully it charged up enough. Um, so zero, uh, so if count, uh, if count is zero, that was no pairs. If it returns one, then that's one pair. If it returns two, that was two pairs. If it returns three, that was three of a kind. If it returns four, that was full house. And then right at the very end of the day, we hit on four of a kind, which actually causes a cascade of six uh, counts of a pair, okay? And the reason why um, is this. So when we're looking at the first card, we get three hits on pairs. When we're looking at the second card, we get two hits on pairs. When you're looking at the third two, you get one hit on a pair. So you end up with a six hits on four of a kind. Okay. Um, so what we can do uh, with this information is then build a conditional statement that tests to see which one of these um, is true. Right, so which one which one did we actually hit? Uh, and then we can print, instead of printing how many pairs we found, we can print um, what hand uh, we actually got. All right, so that's what we want to do today. Um, and we're going to start by here, for me, it's line 59. So this is the look for pairs function, line 59. Underneath that print statement, I'm just going to return the count. Okay, I'm going to return the count. And then also, I'm going to comment out these two prints. The purpose of these two print statements was for debugging. All right, we were learning how many times this function was returning value equals next value. Okay, so this code is no longer necessary because we're not debugging. We actually know what the counts are. Uh, and so that's it. We're good. So we're going to come down here into our for loop. I'm going to give myself a little space here. All right. And so look for pairs returns a count. All right. It's the number of pairs that we found. Okay. So look for pairs returns the number of pairs found. What we can do is we can run a uh, conditional structure, an if structure on this 
that um, prints the uh, the hand. So we could say if number of pairs is equal to one, right? Then what we have is one pair. So we can print one pair, all right? And then you can continue on with this pattern. We can say if number of pairs is equal to two. Notice the double equals, all right? Not a single equals, but a double equals. Then we can print two pair, all right? And so on. So um, <coughs> I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds here. Finish this if then structure. Um, you're going to need what? Five, six statements total. Um, one, so one, no, five. One, two, three, four, and then six. All right, so um, I'll give you guys a couple minutes to do this. So here's the ifs, and then this is the count structure. Okay. Fortunately, I can't have them both on the screen at the same time, but maybe I can. Let's see here. I can do it, but it's not very big. There you go. Forgot to resume. All right. I guess you guys are going to have to pause the video here if you need to and copy this down. I went ahead and extended our ifs out here. So we've got, um, we've got the six if statements. We're doing the test here. Um, we should be able to see something bigger than what we've got, oh, I've got a, there's a three of a kind, okay. Um, so it's working, it's finding uh, bigger combinations. Um, all right, now, this uh, if structure is flawed. <coughs> it's not good enough. Uh, and the reason why is because only one of these six options can be true, okay? Only one of the six can be true. But every time, all six will be tested, okay? The correct way to do a, an if structure where you want to do, uh, where, o huh, where only one of the set can be true is to either use a switch, uh, which is uh, a little beyond our scope right now, or to use else uh, if structures, which you guys have done before in the other class, um, in the other half of the class. So anyway, that would look like this. Now I'm going to type this in. You're going to see that there's a bunch of red lines because this is actually not the correct way to do it. In Python, it is the correct way to do it in like virtually every other programming language, but it's not the correct way in Python. Uh, Python does not have the else if keyword combination. Instead, um, but I want you to see it because this is it. All right, if you're doing Java, if you're doing uh, C++ or C or C Sharp, okay, or any of those languages, um, Swift, all right, they all do it this way with else if, okay. Um, but for some reason, Python writes else if like this. Elif. That is the Python keyword for else if. It's E-L-I-F. So if you just kind of back this up a little bit, change each one of these into an elif. Now the last one, is this is kind of our default case. So the default case looks like this, usually. Just else no pairs, all right? And uh, that's it. All right, that's the refactor for this one.